Hi, I'm Cindy Cloward with Riley Blake Designs and I have a special project to share with you. It is a jean quilt, but it's also a memory quilt. My dad passed away a little under a year ago and we donated most his clothes to charity, but I kept his jeans and his woven plaid shirts to make quilts. I've been making quilts for myself, my siblings, and I even made one for my son using his jeans and his shirts and they're very special quilts to me and it helps me remember my dad. So how did I make these quilts? Well, I grouped all the fabrics together, the jeans, the shirts, in coordinating colors. So you can see that I've got this plaid shirt, I start with the plaids and then I choose the jeans to go with them. So I like how these are cool tones, so I chose a cool um, blue jean, a little bit on the gray side, and then I chose this gray jean. I think those will look really nice together. And um, you use two jeans, one shirt, and then you're gonna have to get another coordinating fabric. Now this is 100% cotton, all about plaids. We have a lot of RBD plaids that have worked really well in this project. And I like how it harmonizes this, this grouping of fabrics together. So you can see, I'm gonna put these two together in a quilt block. Those look really nice together. And I'm gonna put these together in a quilt block. And I like that you have the dark and the light and how they play together. And um, it's gonna look really fantastic in a quilt. But you also um, want to consider whether you're gonna add borders on your quilt. I've added borders to make it a generous lap size quilt. And you're gonna need a coordinating fabric of, additional about two yards. Now, if you want an inner border and outer border, uh, that's gonna be about a half a yard for your inner border and binding, and then a yard and a half for your coordinating plaid. So I'm gonna put this aside because I'm working on this blue jean quilt today. And so you can see I started with the plaid shirt and pulled two jeans. I've already cut these squares out um, that will coordinate with this plaid shirt because it's got light and dark colors. And then this is my coordinating fabric. And see how it just harmonizes with the other, uh, with the jeans and the shirt. So I think that's gonna look really nice. And I'm gonna pair these two together and I, I'm going to pair the light and the dark together. So in all the quilts I made, they're slightly different and it's fun to create new designs uh, with these blocks. I just use three basic blocks with borders. The three blocks are an eight and a half inch square and it's so fun to incorporate the recognizable parts of the jean in the quilt. So here's a back pocket, half square triangles, very simple to create, and then an hourglass block. So we have those three blocks. The supplies that you need to get started are a sharp rotary cutter, just your everyday utility scissors. You don't want your best scissors cutting out your jeans. Uh, of course, a cutting mat, um, a ruler, an eight and a half and nine and a half inch square up ruler. These come in so handy and a rotating mat um, is very helpful too. I used an all-purpose thread that has polyester in it because uh, the jeans is a very heavyweight fabric and you don't want your threads to break when you're sewing this project and you also will need a denim needle. If you use a regular universal needle you'll be disappointed in the sewing so make sure you get a sharp denim needle and get a pack of them because they really wear out as you're sewing with these jeans. So let's take a quick look at the quilts I've already made. Again, this is a generous lap size quilt and see if you can pick out which is my dad's plaid shirt. And the clue is whatever the border fabric is, is not the plaid shirt. So 
uh, the plaid shirt that um, I used in this quilt is this red. And I love the pop of color that it, it brings to this quilt and it has some grays and blacks in it. So I pulled my dad's black jeans and then his dark charcoal jeans. And I loved how that worked together. And then the coordinating uh, fabric that I brought in to pull this quilt all together had the blacks and the grays. And you can see I used my square, my half square triangle is here that uses my dad's shirts. And then the hourglass block is what I used for the coordinating fabric. And then you can see I did a charcoal inner border and I used that same charcoal for the binding. So that's one quilt. The next quilt I wanted to show you is this jean quilt and this time I used my dad's woven shirt in the hourglass block, not the half square triangles. And so I, I liked how this turned out and it look how the pattern within the pattern worked out. And so I framed these pockets. I asked my long arm quilter to not close the pockets because I just love putting my hands in there. That's, if I'm giving these away to you know my siblings or one of my kids, I can put a little note in there, maybe a picture um, of my dad as kind of to celebrate this memory quilt and remember my dad. So you can see that here's the square blocks, the hourglass blocks, and the half square triangle is that coordinating fabric. And you can see it on the border, but I also did another coordinating fabric for the inner border. And I, I really like how that turned out. The third quilt that I've made, I've used the quilt box to be an outside border around the entire quilt. And these are, eight inch finished and so you need that middle section to be about 42 and a half by 52 and a half inches for it to make a seamless border around there. So let's get started on how to make this jean quilt and sometimes it's a memory quilt for you. And like I said, I've already cut out some jeans. And depending on the size of the jeans, my dad was a fairly big guy. Um, you can get about 12 to 14 blocks out of the, uh, the jean fabric. You can get, oh, about eight blocks out of, or squares, I should say. I'm calling them blocks, but eight squares out of the fabrics of a shirt. So I'm gonna put these over to the side. Now wash, Make sure they're clean. Wash um, the items, the used jeans and the shirt ahead of time. Give them a, a quick press so they'll be a little easier to work with. And I'm gonna show you how I cut these up. Again, what's so special about these is when I see this pocket and I see the faded areas, it will remind me of my dad. So let's put this over here. Again, you don't want to use your very best scissors because this fabric is quite coarse. But I lay these out and I cut up one side of the fabric. Now, I cut on the outside because sometimes you need to cut into this seam on the other side. And I think it's really interesting and fun to have this seam in a quilt. And these, these jeans are a little more worn and loved on by my dad. And I think it just adds interest if they are a little worn. And you can see right here, there's a lot of thickness in this pocket. And so again, you don't want to use your very best scissors. There you go. A little messy. And I'm gonna take it over here. Okay, so you can see how those have just opened up. And I'm just gonna work on one side of the pants. Now, you're gonna do squares 
and half square triangles and hourglass blocks. For your squared, and all, all your blocks are gonna measure eight and a half inches unfinished. So they're finished when they're in the quilt at eight inches. So the pockets are the squares in my quilt. And so when I'm cutting out my pockets, I get this you know, little trim up ruler and I want as much of the pocket in there and I wanna make sure I have seam allowance around the entire pocket and it's centered. So I center this line right here on the bottom of the pocket it has that nice little point. And then I take my ruler and just make sure it's level up there. And if it's off grain, that's okay. You want your pocket to look straight and even on both sides. So once it's even on both sides, you get out your rotary cutter and make sure it's nice and sharp. And I'm going to just turn it slightly. Oh, let's just cut off this extra piece. And because there's so much bulk, it's going to pop up your, your template, but just adjust it accordingly, ever so slightly, put, put pressure down. So there, there's your square, and that's all ready to go. Now for your half square triangles, you're gonna need nine and a half inches all the way along. Again, so we lay that down. is where I wish I was ambidextrous that I could just use both hands to cut out. Oops, let me just cut that. Okay, there's one more. I'm going to cut one more. So you can just see this process. Okay, now you're seeing that you're getting to the end of the leg. And if you want to use your smaller square, you can eke out another quilt block at the bottom, which is an eight and a half inch square, and then go into your side, your middle inseam. And when you do this, make sure it's just not on the edge. Put it more towards the center if you're doing it that way. And then I would repeat for the front of the leg. Again, you can get one, two, three, about three more blocks there, four um, tops on each leg to get all the blocks that are needed. All right, that's my last block, my last cut. You can see that we've almost used every bit of this jean. If you wanna cut out some of the, the zipper or something else for something fun, you can do that, but I usually just throw them away. And this gave me eight nine and a half inch squares and four eight and a half inch squares. You can see for those, I use the pockets and then I use the inseam, which adds a little interest to the quilt. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is grab our plaid shirt and start working on the plaid shirt. Again, similar to what we did before. I kind of just cut up the side like this. And this is a short sleeve shirt, so I might get a block or two less since they're too 
arms, probably two less. So you open it up like that. We'll open up the other side. Let me hurry and cut that open too. And this is a woven shirt. So it is not printed. And so you can line up your ruler to cut on grain on this shirt, on the stripes. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, so I lay it out like this. Now, some of my dad's woven shirts had pockets, and you can square out the pocket if you like. Um, I did that on one of the pockets, and um, I did just have my long arm quilter quilt that shut. It didn't bother me. But so, since I do have a pocket, I'm gonna line that up there. Again, just kind of center it up. You can make sure all your lines line up on the grid. And that is just a very sharp rotary cutter. So be super careful when you're cutting out your blocks. I'm gonna cut this right here. And this fabric is just a little more fine. So I have some of um, my dad's shirts have felt you know, like a chambray, but this is a little bit finer fabric. And I haven't had any problems assembling this quilt using different substrates. So that, that's a square that we'll use. And the rest I'm gonna do my nine and a half inches. So I am just going to show you how the open up sleeves, the same if it's long sleeve, sometimes you can get uh, two blocks out of long sleeve, an eight and a half inch and a nine. Let's see what I'm going to get out of this. And I can't quite get a nine. Well, I can. If I go into the hem sleeve, I can. And I think that'll be okay. I'll take, I haven't tried this before, but I'm lining this up and I'm going into the shoulder. So I'm just gonna see how that works. So there we go, I'm gonna line that there. And again, I'm just gonna go around this shirt trying to get as many nine and a half inch quilt blocks as I can. And then I'll meet you back here when it's all cut up. The next thing you do is need to prep all your squares by pressing them. Sometimes I starch them uh, on the woven shirts. That's kind of nice to have a little starch, have a little extra fabric. It went into the seam, so I have part of the seam in there. So let me just trim that off. And I'm going to get all these pressed and ready for our next step. So I've pressed all my squares and now I'm ready to work on my blocks. Again, your eight and a half inch squares, you don't need to do anything to them to prep them because you're going to put them in the quilt as is. And now I'm going to make my half square triangles and hourglass blocks. And you can do it all at once. Well, I'll leave the jean there for now. And you're gonna just mark one of your fabrics. It's easy to mark the woven fabrics on the wrong side because you're gonna put uh, right sides together. So it's a little subtle. It's a little hard to tell because these are woven fabrics, which is the right and the wrong side. This has slightly more color on this side. So I, I'm going to mark the back side, but again, since they're woven, it doesn't matter so much if you mix them up. No one will tell. 
I'm going to mark with a mechanical pencil or a marking tool corner to corner. Just going to mark a few of those. I'm not going to do them all right now. Yep, that looks like that. There we go. And I've already marked this one. So let's do three at a time. So again, this marked line is not your sew line, it's your guide, and you're gonna sew a fourth inch on each side of this marked line. So I'm gonna give it a quick press. I tend to give it a temporary heat adhesive instead of pinning sometimes. Three of my blocks sewn. Well started anyway. Give them a quick clip. Oh, wait, let me grab my ruler. Let me start with this one. Now this line can also be your cut line, that line in the center. Now we're going to press open like that and I just make sure this is flipped over. It's going one direction. You can let the Taylor's clapper rest on there. All of these blocks, if you're keeping them half square triangles, are ready to go. You would just need to square them up to eight and a half inches, and you've got plenty of room to do those. But these blocks, I, I'm gonna use these for my half square triangles. I'm gonna use these block as my hourglass blocks. So you have one more step. So you're gonna take two of them like this. I might leave this in the half square triangle because I like the how this is worn right there. I think that's interesting. So I might leave one half square triangle, but the rest I'm gonna make an hourglass blocks. So how you do that is put your jeans on opposite sides, right sides together. And you're going to check, fold it back. And if it makes that hourglass shape, you've got it right. That's what it should look like when you pull one corner back. And since they're iron pressed to one side, they should click into place. So I just gently put my edges together like that. Just coax the fabric into place. And this I do pin because it's important that your seams don't shift and they line up properly. So I pin usually a couple places. So the last thing you need to do before you sew is mark corner to corner. Okay, and that is going to be your guide and you're gonna sew a fourth inch on each side of that. pull out your pins and you have just made two hourglass blocks at the same time. Now you can 
cut on your, your marked line. Open it up, take a look. That looks good. Take it to your pressing station. Again, I don't open up my seams because that makes your quilt blocks weaker. So make sure they shift to one side. It is going to be a little bulky right in the middle, but that's okay. Let it rest on your clapper. Okay, let's pull out our rotating mat to trim up our blocks. Oh, we are trimming them up to eight and a half inch squared. So it's important to line up your seams. See how that is all lined up before you trim. Press down in the middle because there is bulk. So you don't want it to be wobbly as you're rotating around. There. It's a really effective tool. So that block squared up. Square up this one. Then we'll square up our half square triangle. Now, once that's all finished, to start assembling your quilt. And you can design your quilt however you would like. Like I mentioned, I kind of liked having a square in the middle. So sometimes I'd put my hourglass blocks all the way around and you could do it whichever pattern pattern you would like then I would start incorporating you know your half square triangles and the design and just lay out your quilt with interesting patterns using the light and dark whatever way you would like again I have the the coordinating fabric that I'd add a border, you can add a simple border with just this fabric or add another interesting element with another coordinating print. But you can decide any kind of placement that you want to have with your jean blocks, your half square triangles, and your hourglass blocks. Again, isn't it fun to see that wallet imprint? Um, for this quilt, I went five blocks across, six blocks down. I added two simple borders, but whatever you want to do, it's your quilt. So I hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial on a jean quilt that also can be a memory quilt that you will enjoy for many years to come.